setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. Oh, it, is, it's, it is live. Yeah, I think we're live. I'm going to go back to <laughs> Zoom in a minute. Everybody who's watched me before, you know that there's like an awkward 45 seconds while I get everything set up. You just have to be patient. I'll go back to here. I'm so grateful you're the one doing it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was like one of the best I've ever done. <laughs> all right. For those of you who weren't with us last week, this is my new girlfriend, Meg Tilly. We talked a little too long last night about too many things and we didn't get to any of the questions and you had really good ones too. So I invited Meg back and she said, yes. And so we're gonna answer some questions, but first Meg, tell us about the um, cabinet you've got behind you. Oh, right. Okay, so this cabinet I got, I found it in old, uh, you know, one of those old stores that have old, old furniture and stuff. And what it is, is it's got, it, that was before when I didn't have, I wasn't quite as, you know, computer literate. So it's got different things. Like I've got a drawer that's all my grandmother's letters to me when I was in New York setting ballet. I've got one with my mom. I've got letters from my sister. I've got love letters from my husband, my, my sons, you know, my children. And then I also have my rejection letters in the old days where they used to send you rejection letters in the mail. I, I wouldn't save the ones that were like, oh no, you know, just like, but the ones that said, oh, you're so very talented and we'd like to see something again. I just it's kept those good. because it shores you up and, uh, so yeah, it's got things like that in there. Is it an old card catalog? It looks like an old card catalog. Yeah, I think it was like for files or something like that. I'm not sure. Maybe it was, yeah, files like, or I don't know what it's for. I just saw it and I thought it was pretty and yeah. it had a good feeling. Like, you know, sometimes you can, there's furniture and it looks pretty, but it has a feeling like, oh, feel right. right. I want that energy in my house. It felt good, so. Yeah, now, so tell us what the report is on weather outside as a West Coaster. Is it still smoky out? Oh, thank goodness this weekend it, it, it cleared and you're just so grateful because your lung, the lungs are, you know, still recuperating, but I don't know how those poor firefighters do it. I mean, I'm so grateful them risking life and limb, you know, going out there and battling it. And they're so much closer than we are, but the air quality was so bad. Um, it, you know, it's, it, it's still, the lungs are still recuperating, but what a blessing. And I think that's the thing is like in this time where there's so much challenge out there, it's, it's like, it's like, I don't know, it's like the world saying, but you can breathe, but yeah. this is a blessing. Do you know what I mean? The, the little things that, and, and I feel so like grateful it. every day when I look out and it's not like twilight all day and I, and I can actually go outside without yeah. a mask it, outside in our yard because I don't go anywhere else. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, these questions I copied from last week and they're kind of going to be random. Okay. Um, and the first question I just found out the answer to, do you have any pets? <laughs> yes, we've got a dog named Anna and she's a mixed breed and she's uh, fluffy and white. And we got her, we are actually we weren't actually planning on getting her. I was doing um, the Bomb Girls and I was supposed to shoot a film with um, that that winter, um, that I mean that winter with um, Dave Matthews, the singer. Uh, but then the, the funding fell through, but I didn't know it then. So I, I saw this dog and I was like, oh, it's really cute. Shall we go? But, um, but uh, my husband said, well, let's just take a look. And I said, well, I can't get a dog now because I'm going to be shooting this film. Um, but we went and we didn't want the one that we thought we wanted on the picture. Instead, we got Anna, who's got like the overbite. The, the overbite, the bottom overbite. Yeah, that, yeah, and she's got drippy eyes. And she, but her personality, we just fell in love. And she's a little fluff ball like this. And, and I saw and, her. She was dying. Yeah, when she was in face. Well, I tried to get you to keep her in, but apparently it for, for this, but she's kind of a pain. I, on the <laughs> other hand, have, I have um, three grand cats, uh, I think five grand dogs, one mm -hmm. of whom looks very much like your dog. My li little Yoshi's a little um, toy poodle, a little t teeny oh. one. Um, and I have a grand horse. Oh, a, um, uh, my uh, my one of my my oldest bonus a granddaughter saved a an Icelandic pony from oh. a slaughter, oh, and man. that is her pony Rosie. So I have uh -huh. I have a grand horse. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, ready. Um, I'm gonna I'll answer these. You answer these. 
Uh, I'm going to answer the first one and then throw it to you because I got some questions to ask. Do you have any other hobbies other than writing? Well, I think both of us would say writing isn't exactly a hobby, but um, I, um, my thing has been travel and hiking, which I haven't been able to do. Yoga, I've been having knee issues. So um, I, I don't feel like I have a really good hobby now, except cleaning out our basement storage room, which is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on again after this is over the glamorous life. Tell, tell us about your hobbies. And I'm going to tell them about the email you sent me after our last uh, chat. Oh, I guess my hobbies. Okay. This sounds like a weird hobby, but one of my hobbies is eating because I really like food. So I love um, making something I feel like and then eating it or going somewhere. If you get like a certain taste, like oh, I really want this. That was one of the things out of quarantine where you're like, oh, let's go do it. You know, so I guess that's a happy hobby. I like hiking as well as you do. I'm not as, you know, boom as you are because I've, I've seen you like I but, you know, I've I guess the most I've ever done is maybe 12 kilometer at, in one day. That's, that's, but, that's happy. Yeah. Let's see. I think, um, I think that's, wait a minute. I like is reading. Is huh? cooking a hobby of yours? Aren't you, a, don't you I like, like cooking? And I, I, I like cooking. Well, I like, I like eating. So I like cooking. So cooking and eating are kind of the same hobby because I, I think I'm um, having to eat so many weird things as a kid growing up that, 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 that then I could be like, oh, I really feel like this. And then, and then I make it and then I eat it. And if I don't feel like, then I can say to my husband, oh, honey, one of the things I miss in quarantine is really good. Like, you know, whatever. And then he'll be like, oh, let me figure out how to do that. So that's a, you know, and I like, re I love reading. I, I like, I like singing. I used to sing, but not so much anymore because my mom, when she passed. I, and I've seen in, in a couple of your, uh, for those of you who didn't watch last time, Meg has a wonderful YouTube series um, that is uh, Meg's Cozy Tea Time. And in one of them, she, she does sing, which is, you have an absolutely lovely voice. But after our last, um, after our last uh, chat, as soon as I got off, you shot me an email and you said, oh, I'm going to go in the kitchen and have a warm ginger scone <laughs> dipping with hot honey. I was ready to snack you I mean that sounded so good <laughs> it was my husband got a new recipe and it's a really really good one it's really good because it's very flaky with a little bit of crisp on the outside oh stop it it's really really good stop it. It, when this quarantine's over and we meet up I'll, 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 up yeah I'll bring you a fat all right this sounds good um so uh, this question is, have you ever made a book trailer for your books? It's kind have of a you, random question, but have you ever made a book trailer? Have I? I, I don't I haven't made one for mine, but I, I helped uh, do my husband's one. I directed him on one that he did where he had our, our little dog be like a wild animal. And he played like this guy in the outback, you know, eating gummy worms and out of mud and pretend mud and stuff like that. So I've shot him doing one. I haven't done one for me. Have you? Um, I've done a couple of them and my favorite was I did a book called when uh, called heroes are my weakness it's one that I'm sending to you because I know you like suspense and there's a strong it's it's my modern take um, a contemporary take on the old-fashioned gothics um, and it takes place in the winter so I had this idea I'm, I'm walking one day and it's like Oh, maybe 14 degrees, if that. It was really cold and it was snowy. And I had this idea of doing this trailer where part of it is in the snow and part of it is going to be, I'd wait until the summer when the book was coming out and I'd uh -huh. do part by the swimming pool. So I got home, I got in my bathing suit. I grabbed Mr. Bill and I said, we're going down to the, the neighborhood. There's a, 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 an open area in our neighborhood and I'm going, to, I'm going to film this in my bathing suit. And I had on high boots and um the bathing suit and i mean it was so cold and so bill filmed that part with uh, my ipad and then when summer rolled around we did the swimming pool part with the phone and the two parts didn't match at all i mean it was a disaster but it was a noble idea i thought yeah, yeah. did you ever put it up yeah yeah it's up there oh, somewhere cool. google um probably on youtube heroes are my weakness okay and i'm gonna look it up weird stitched together video <laughs> have you ever missed a deadline for your books 
Um, I haven't missed the deadline, but one deadline I did when the um, when this first started and we went into lockdown and I was supposed to, we had talked about, could I have it at the, I think the 15th of May, uh, there was a period right towards the beginning where I'd, I'd been sick for around three weeks. And so I'd lost that time. So I, I contacted them and I said, look, I've been sick. So I've lost a bit of time. I can send it to you, but I like to, when I do finish a book, cause I would get, I like to be able to go over it a couple times before I send it. And so I said, so it's your choice. I can send you the finished, but I won't have had time to do. And they said, no, no, take the extra 15 days. But it wasn't really a deadline because they had written to say, would you be able to? Right. And then right. I said, yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah. I've never missed a deadline because I always build these ridiculous long deadlines into my contract. Yeah. And then I play this game with editor Carrie where she knows I'm not going to take that long. And I keep I always let her know how I'm getting how I'm getting through. Mm -hmm. how, uh, so she knows when it's coming in. I think that the deadline for the book that I sent her last week is like a year and a half from now. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, I know. Wow. I just, I can't stand that feeling because I'm yeah. a, I'm a rule follower and I can't stand yeah. that feeling of having that deadline crashing in on me. I, I agree with you because the deadlines, I, I feel like if you do, then, then you're like, ha, I've got to, instead of sinking into the story and That's getting right. it just how you want it. Doing the best yeah. job possible. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I've been getting a lot of questions about the next book. I'm not ready to talk about it. I'll, uh, it's fabulous, but I'm not ready to talk about it. I'll probably be talking about it in January and February. Uh -huh. And you're due with your new one, The Runaway Heiress, uh -huh. where you're going to tell us Mary's story. Yes. Thank goodness, because that would have been really sadistic not just to tell that. <laughs> um, I have, yeah, I hadn't expected to do a story for her, but you know, sometimes you'll have a character in a previous book that just says no. And then people kept writing and saying, what happened? And I was like, okay, I'm, that's what I'm going to do next. But you I didn't know if they would want to do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do. And for people who don't know, your Souls Island series, this would be actually the fourth book in that series. Yes. You can read them out of order um, or you can, it, it's always a little more fun to read them in order, but I think that series you can really read out of order. Yeah. One of your favorite words is cozy. You <laughs> love cozy. You love cozy, cozy clothes. You love think cozy things around you. You love cozy tea. Those books are not cozy. They're not <laughs> <laughs> to address the jury. On <laughs> okay. They're cozier than my previous books. So they're cozier than my other adult books. So for me, yes, I planned on being super cozy, um, but then that came out. So I'd say the first one, the Solace Island is cozy, a little bit cozy, like it's a, the suspense isn't quite as, as, um, you know, the other two, uh, yeah. whatever they're called. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Cliff's Edge yeah. and yeah. Hidden Co, I know. But um, yeah, so I do like cozy, but what I find cozy is, the relationships between the people and that it ends up happy so that I feel like it's a safe ride. But yes, I, and I do some of the suspense books. I, I don't read romantic suspense because they, they scare it's me too scary. much. Yeah. But I think um, that it just comes up sometimes, you know, the dark and the balance. So, well, the yeah. books are real page turners. You should feel good about that. Uh, can I give you some constructive criticism yes. overall about your approach to writing? Yes. I think from what you just told me that as you move forward, you need to incorporate a few more of those pornographic food descriptions like oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. They are, I think they are. I, I, it's funny because when I'm writing it, then I'm like, ooh, as I'm writing it, I'm not sure what they eat. And then I'm like, oh, they didn't have that. Then I'm like, oh, I'm going to make that. And then I'll go downstairs and I'll cook it. Or else I'll, if it's Don's turn to cook, I'll be like, oh, what about this? Um, yeah, I, I love it. I think because growing up uh, poor and hungry, that's one of the things that I really remember about a lot of the books is, is the taste of the chocolate. Is the, you know, so I, I ate food when I was hungry. In, in the books that I read sometimes where, it, and I remember, well, that's a long story though, we've got lots of questions, so. <laughs> but you, so it really is your, your, this passion for food is I think what a lot of people from a really difficult childhood, especially if they've gone hungry, mm -hmm. um, carry through. And, and yeah. that absolutely makes total sense. Um, okay, this is a question we get, how many pages do you write a day? Uh, I think, 
readers should know that not all of us go by page count. Some people go by page count, word count, time, scenes. I go by time. I set the timer and however much I get done, whether it's one paragraph or four pages, that's the work for the day. How do you do it? How do you that's, set your... Uh, I, I think that's, that's lovely how you do it. Um, I've done where I had to, what I was doing for many, many, most of my life, um, writing life, 30 years, is three pages a day. So if I get three pages a day, then I could stop. And sometimes I can get those three pages in three and a half hours. And sometimes it would take me seven hours. I'm getting a little more gentle with myself now. So I try to get three pages. Sometimes I might get four. Sometimes I might get two and a half. But if I've done a chunk of time, of focused time every day, that's, that's, that's it. it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. This is not on the list, but it's on my list. Um, so there is a picture on the internet of you in Brad Pitt's arms. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that was for war machine right yeah uh yeah. and i heard you saying some really really lovely things about poor brad he's ha he's had a hard time lately but you were saying the lovely things about he is he has had a hard time i mean i he has had it but it seems like out of hard times sometimes comes um really wonderful wonderful shifts in one's life i found him a wonderful remarkable uh, person to work with I hadn't worked in many years and um, well, I'd, and I'd done, I'd done the bomb girls, but I hadn't done. And I show up on this set and he is so gracious and he is so kind and he gives full behind the camera and, but he was playing my husband. So he's, you know, the character he plays in War Machine is very <laughs> like, he'll grab you, give you a kiss, <laughs> but he wasn't, you know, so I didn't really see Brad Pitt until he kind of, came out at the at the party at the end and, and then like, well, I was expecting my husband you know and and I had great warm feelings for my husband as my character and then this creature walks out and I'm like holy shit he's a movie star <laughs> like, like oh my gosh I can see why he's a heart from holy smokes but I didn't see that he stayed in character and he was just he was just that guy yeah so yeah. it was really uh funny even though I'm an actress I I was really it just really through me and then I then I got kind of shy so I talked for a little bit and I left <laughs> right, I've always wondered I never nobody's ever asked this question but like when you're with Brad Pitt on on set or something when you're with some of these male movie stars do they smell good or they just smell like makeup or like moldy <laughs> costume <laughs> well you know it, it's Brad so I guess my character was nuzzling in but I it's funny because I I I he was my husband to me right so even though he's there or snuggling up or, you know, doing whatever, like, in, and we had a lot of stuff on, it, he was just my husband. So I didn't really, I don't really know what Brad smells like. Do you know what I mean? I didn't really take yeah. him in as that. I know that seems weird, but, but it, it yeah. And then I saw him at the, um, at the opening, you know, when we went and he was Brad again. And so then he was getting his picture and then he said, come on. And I did the picture and I stood by him and then I thought, oh, it's Brad and there's all these other actors and they probably, you know, want to stand next to him too. So then I'm like, okay, I'll let somebody else have his time. Then I went over there and I was like, no, he probably wanted to say hi and see me. And he was going through a difficult time. And all I was thinking is, oh, I don't want to steal. You know what I mean? It's so, yes, it's so, yeah. because then he was, um, but when he was my husband, he was just my husband. My if, he, if he had known you, if he knew you well, um, as we do now, he would have known that you were just kind of being very generous, letting other people come in, because that's that is your character. And yeah. he would have just grabbed you and said, Meg, I want you right next to me. <laughs> All right. Oh, this He's is the uh, Let's see. Um, how hard is it to pick a title or cover for your book or books? You want to address that first and then I'll talk about it. Okay. I, I, I in the beginning, when I first was with um, Penguin, um, Berkeley Random House, I spent like, um, like trying to figure out the best title and then I'd have it and I'd be like, this is it. And then I'd send it and it would be there and then it would get changed. So, um, so now I don't spend all that time. I just try to be like, what? And the last title for The Runaway Heiress, I, I think I mentioned it last time, that came about by, I did a group Zoom with you and, um, and Dana and Prince and Christina Dodd and 
and they came up with ideas. So yeah. that, but I'm not, and then they'll send covers and say, what do you think? But I'm not good at the visual. Like I can cook, I can write, but I, I'm not good at the knowing. So I, I don't know what, what it should be. So, well, I think you. you've gotten decent covers on your book, but the, my cup, my title thing is just all over the place. Mr. Bill's come up with a couple of great titles. Mm -hmm. He came up with match me if you can, for example, he came up with first star I see tonight. Um, mm -hmm. Dance Away With Me was originally called, I called it The Runaways, but we, I wasn't 100% into that title because there are a lot of books with that type, that title. Uh, so some of the titles come easily. Some of them have come, you know, really, really at the last minute. Uh, but um, in terms of covers, I have a certain amount of input, but if, um, if I love a cover, and the sales force says it wasn't, it isn't going to sell. I can fight up to a certain point, mm -hmm. and then I just kind of have to give up. So mm -hmm. some of my covers I have loved. Most of my covers I have loved. A yeah. couple of them I have not loved at all, but I kind of had to had to yeah. give in on them. But uh, in general, I've been I've been pretty happy with it, and I do get to give feedback. Mm -hmm. I so, love the covers that you have uh, behind you. I mean, of course, I've got the Dance Away With Me cover because I, I got it on ebook, but then I wanted to keep it for good. But I love the way that I love the, your title, Dance Away With Me, just because the way it's incorporated throughout the book and how you're introduced to her. And she's like, oh, like trying to dance out her pain and just like try to make sense of like, it's just that kind of visceral like, oh, you know, and then and then how you weave it in throughout and to the end. And, and, and I think, you know, as a dancer, that's what I was trying to do, you know, when I when I did the ballet, the same yeah, thing. Yeah. So I love the title. So um, one of uh, the questions was, Meg, wouldn't you love to play Tess in a made for TV movie? <laughs> from that book? I'm good with that. I'm good with that. <laughs> I would have given my whatever the phrase is. <laughs> right teeth no you're whatever to play Tess but I'm too old for her now like Tess should be she you know she should be around 25 30 years younger than me I think it would make a, a wonderful show I think it would make a good either use it as a as a tv thing for as a kicking off place because the character's so good and the the setting is so good that you could you know do that actually I, I'd sent uh I'd sent an email to one of my friends I don't have very many friends in business anymore, but I was like, I think this would be a good, because I, I really think it would, or, or it's a film just as contained, but there's so much richness in there. And the, sometimes with films, they have to cut out some of the layers. They so, really do. I, yeah. Do you have um, any aspirations for any of your books going into film? How much have you, have you put any effort into that or is, is it, because it's always such a crapshoot, is it just like whatever will be, will be or effort? Right. I have, um, so my, my first book, Singing Songs, was optioned and did a screenplay, it didn't get made. My um, Porcupine, Rosie O'Donnell's company, optioned it, did a screenplay, um, they couldn't get it, get it made. I, I've sold a bunch of screenplays as well. I think that the Solace Island series would be really good uh, films, like really good because there's a suspense and there's a romance and there's the action and there's, so I think those would be really good, but I'm definitely not spending time chasing it because right. then they might be like, oh, would you like to write it? And writing screenplays, um, I've done quite a few. They pay you well, but you it's writing by committee. And um, I'm at the age of my life where I really like to do what I want to do yeah. and I want to do it. And, you know, and if something makes it better, yes, but lots of times with screenplays, it's different from books. Right. But Soul Island would make a great series because you could have connecting characters. Yeah. I mean, and you've yeah. got such great plots in those books. Well, <laughs> but as you said, I mean, I don't think readers realize how little control an author has when it comes to that. And then if you do sell the book, uh, what you end up with so frequently is not the book in the reader's heads. And no. then who do the readers go to to complain? Not the film <laughs> company. They come to the author. Okay. Um, is there any other ones of your books that you think, because I think Dance Away With Me would be a wonderful one. Is there any other ones of your ones where you're like, oh, we've crazy. had lots of nosing around with the Wynette Texas books, mm -hmm. with the Chicago Stars books. And I, honestly, I don't put much thought mm -hmm. into it because, yeah, would it be cool? Yeah, but what they put on the screen isn't going to be what I put in the book. So, yeah. 
I'm just so content with where I am and my yeah. reasons. Like you said, I can control this yeah. output right now. And I love that. Yeah. Um, have you written more or less during the pandemic? Okay. When it first started, I found it really, really hard because I was freaking out, <laughs> you know, and then I was trying to make sure that my family knew how, how big, you know, and all my loved ones and my friends who were just, you know, and so I, I felt like I had to try to keep my entire world safe right. remotely. So it was really hard to focus, but then it shifted into, it's just kind of become all this stuff that hits every day. It becomes just part of our normal life. And I realized I can't be waiting for life to be normal until I can allow myself to live it. Because these days I'm not getting back, right? These yeah. days are days that I, I don't get back. You have a certain amount. I don't know how many I do. So I, it's, I have to try to find the, and so, I, so, I, so then after I realized that and tried to settle into, okay, I have a cup of tea. Oh, this is lovely. It's warm. And I'm yep. going to drink it. And oh, I've made something to eat. Like the little momentary, like now, fresh air to breathe. What a blessing. Then I was able to write again. But it's, it was really, really hard. It was really hard for the first few months. How about you? What I um, did not have a hard time. Yeah. With me, there was this weird relief that I almost felt guilty about because I could... Um, because I could just focus on my writing mm -hmm. and block out a lot of other things. And then I started thinking about all the people who didn't have that luxury, who are still trying to raise children and all this. But for me, it's just like you said, I, I'm such a strong believer in trying to focus on the gratitude mm -hmm. and just the fact that we were all healthy mm -hmm. and that um, the, we had a roof over our head. I, mm -hmm. Those things, I just, I, I don't take for granted. So no. I, it has been actually a pretty productive time for me. Also, I wasn't running around running errands all the time. Right. Yeah. So right. That, you yeah. don't realize how much you do that. And right. I remember my sister, you know, we would talk and we'd be, and then she'd say, I just wake up every morning and I'm just filled with gratitude. I'm like, I can breathe. You know, I can breathe. Yeah, so. that's really, really important. Well, this is good. I'm going to, I'll go first on this one. Okay. We're asked what advice we would give someone who wants to become a writer. And um, I have a couple of things. My first idea is write. Mm -hmm. I've, over the years, I've seen so many people who talk about being a writer, who think about being a writer, who go to writing workshops, who read books about writing, but they can't make that step to sit down and write because it is so scary and can be so paralyzing. And what I always say is, you're not special. It is that way for all of us. That blank screen is, can be so paralyzing. And so I say for new writers, sit down and write. If you uh, are really, really unnerved, set your timer for 10 minutes, that's it. And you have permission to put anything on the screen because nobody's gonna see it until you want them to. So that's my initial tip for people who wanna be writers. What do you have? I think that's really, really good advice. I remember seeing an interview with Nora Roberts and she said something to the effect of, I can't fix a blank page. I can fix a, you know, I can write a shit, I can, whatever it was, uh, but I can't. Fix I can fix a bad page. I can't fix a blank page. Oh, that's, that's right. That's quote. what it was. Yes. I and love that. Oh, so good. Right. And so I have to tell myself that sometimes it's like, you just have to just run full tilt. Yeah. You might fall, you know, when you're like a kid and you're going to, and you see kids and they're running down and then they fall and they tumble and they roll and they roll. You have to take that risk. That you're going to fall and you're going to tumble because we all fall and tumble and roll and roll and then and then we say oh but this bit here is pretty good or this bit here isn't pretty good but it's a window into this story yes so i would i would say that also i would say that um some people are yes you have to sit down and write and some but some people have different processes so i remember being at one writing um or whatever and there was this author who 
he had become a big author, but his first book, he started 12 years before, and then he was right, and then he put it away, and he was a police officer, and this and that, and then he came back to it, and um, started writing, and, and then I, because he probably, he was scared, but some people are gathering uh, life, but I think the best thing, like you said, is to just write, and to have a daily practice of it, because I find yeah. if I miss one day, the next day is a little harder. If I miss two days, forget about it. And if you miss the, you know, it, it's so it's a, it's a habit thing, but only yeah, that's um, true. I mean, if you, if you start missing days, then you have to keep going back. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's challenging. Also for me, I have, when I'm brainstorming, I, because I, I am a pantser, I don't have, know my plots ahead of time. You know, I write and then I'm completely stuck. And like when my husband wants to think something through, he sits in a chair and he closes his eyes and thinks. When I sit in the chair and close my eyes, you know, everything, I've got a million thoughts. So I brainstorm on my yellow tablet and just do stream of consciousness writing. That really helps me focus my brain when it comes to working out plot snarls, which I have all the time. Yeah. And sometimes the ideas will come up for me when I'm active. Like if I'm, if I'm doing dishes or if right. I'm walking or if I'm, so you try to, if you're on a project, try to always have something so that you can put, or, if, you know, if you have your phone, you can put it in the notes section. And I do the same thing. It's like, oh, you know, I'll get an idea for it. But I have, I try to be organized, but I have so many post-its like stacked in paper <laughs> and I try to do a little binder, but then it gets all in there. So I'm putting post-its on pages and stuff and, you know, it's like, yeah. Oh, I and I every time I'm like this time I'm going to and I'll get the thing and I'll and then it's all over the place so yeah and you know there are all kinds of software programs that eliminate that but I don't want to take the time to learn the program oh, no. so, yeah <laughs> okay um do you have a favorite place where you like to be when you write um, well, right now, the place that I'm writing is is up in the bedroom because it has a door I can shut. So this is a room that it's an office, but I can it has doors that have glass and it's near the kitchen. And so I can hear my husband do 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 and go. And it's it's, uh, you know, it's distracting because I'm like, oh, what's I'm doing? Oh, you know, I can I can be pulled away from my writing anyway. exactly I, like that. Yeah. Ideally, like where we lived before, I had a cabin that was like a, a little hut. That was outside so i'd take i'd walk up the little the incline and then i'd be there and there would be nothing and that right. was my i loved writing there so i have to i'm still trying to find to create that in this in yep. this place here and the best place is there with the door shut and then um noise on online yeah, yeah yeah what about you do you have a favorite place i have um right after the boys left we blew out the whole back of our house and we did this huge expansion you know we're empty nesters so we expand our house but one of the things bill thought i deserved a better office so i have a beautiful office a huge library then it sinks down and big windows i'm just in one little corner of it right now gorgeous right i don't write there <laughs> <laughs> I take my laptop and if we're here in Chicago and it's summer, I write on the screen porch all day long, regardless of the weather. Does that. Uh, if it gets cold, I go into our living room and I have a chair that's really comfy and I write there. And uh, if we're in California, if it's warm enough, I write on the balcony there. If it's not, I find bedrooms and places to hole up. But my office is pretty much the place I'll do revisions in there yeah, and I I'll do uh, business in there and email and all that. Mm -hmm. But I, I like being, co co you know, just cozy to use your word with my, with my computer. Now, can he be in the room while you're writing? Are you comfortable enough? He that has. Oh my gosh, I am so lucky with him. Oh. He um, he is a golfer. So during oh. the summer, and the house is quiet. Oh. But when he's here, he is so respectful of my time. He oh. does not bother me. He uh -huh. keeps himself busy. Um, and he's, he walks a lot quieter than I do. And there's a lot of carpeting. So I don't hear him walking around and I can't see him. So yeah, I'm, I'm really like the other place I'm really lucky with him is that um, he's not a meat and potatoes guy. He likes um, vegetables and salads. He's a total he's a macho guy and he's a total chick eater. Aww. So Aww. that's kind of that's kind of fun. But um, do you we're going to 
go down to our final questions here. Do you do any, do you do your research before you write the book or after or during or what? I would say I do it. I do some before I do some um, a lot, most during, and then some after if I'm like, wait a minute, I better check if this is the right way. So um, I'm online a bit. And then sometimes it, I think the, a huge chunk is right towards the beginning when I'm trying to build the world so that you need to know what they're, what they do for a living, where they live, what the place is like, what the weather is like, what time of year you're going to do it. Um, you know, and you can spend so much time. I remember with one of them, uh, Oak, uh, Cliff's Edge, where the guy break, the stalker breaks in. So uh, videos of how, how to, how to break into houses, how to, you know, um, in, in a different one, how to just uh, take, get rid of the alarm, how to, so you do all this stuff and you have to do all this research. And I, because of uh, suspense, I just hope that, you know, somebody doesn't flag my computer when I'm trying to find out how to get blood out of concrete or, oh, how to, no. or what kind of drugs <laughs> to immobilize somebody, you know, yeah. and, and, and how long did they take? you know, that they don't be like, oh, this woman's planning something very nefarious. I know, weapons and you? that kind of thing. I, um, I do very little before I start writing. Uh, I pretty much research as I go along. I'm always doing it. And I, once, you know, you get, you start looking at research at websites and then you go from one to another and it's like yeah. sunk down in a hole. But um, also I create, um, I, 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 I'm going to try to convince you guys, you and Jane, to do this. I create uh, like Pinterest boards for just for myself. They're hidden. I open them up later for readers to see them. But like in Dance Away With Me, I had a Pinterest board just with ideas for the little cabin that Tess had and a wonderful Pinterest board, Ian's schoolhouse, all those kinds of things. So that every time I see a picture, I can put them in there. And then when I'm writing, I just go right there and I've got all of those images to choose from. Um, That's good. I don't yeah. know how to do Pinterest, but my, my desktop, like I'm just looking at it, you know, I've got the the brooch, I've got the the head of the thing that he uses. I've got, you know, I, I, I have houses, I have, so I do it, but I don't know how to, it's just I have a very crowded, <laughs> a very crowded, right. you it, know. It, it, it's super easy to do. We can zoom sometime, I'll show you how. Uh, and I, other than that, I don't really get on Pinterest because again, that's, that is a, a hole you can sink right down, right. but it is, it, I mean, you can just get the most, uh, you can be really, really specific like luxury mansion chandeliers. I mean, you oh, wow. have so much specific stuff yeah. and you just put it in the file. It takes no time at all. And then wow. Yeah. That's great. Um, all right. Our last question is, is there anything you've read lately that you're recommending? Oh, well, dance away with me. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were always talking about Jane Ann Krenz. Jane, here's her. her quick book. books. It, with, these are in the 1930s and they're so much fun. And this is right. about the photography, uh, this woman who does photography and there's also the crime stuff in it. You know, I love Jane. So I just- uh, you, you always know. have her around. Yeah. 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 And her new one's out. I think it's Tightrope. I have it, but I couldn't find the book, but I would show oh, you. I also read- The, uh, the Ray, beginning Ray, of Tightrope is really scary. Tightrope, yeah. The it is scary. Yeah. Her stuff's scary. Her stuff's scary, but it's safe scary. It like that's like scary. how I try to do mine is it's, it's scary and you have the little bit of turning the pages right. and reading, but there's also humor and it's, it's woven in and you know, you're safe and you know, they're going to, it's going to be okay for everybody, but the villain at the end. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, for everyone around, I am archiving um, all of my videos. I've got a YouTube channel. This is thanks to Meg because she has a YouTube channel. So I said, I got to have one, but she's got like all these followers and I have like a hundred, but that's okay. No, they say it takes like uh, 22 months to get a thousand and then the next thousand. Believe me, you're going to be leapfrogging over me. And it's really great because I love all your interviews. So you should check out her uh, YouTube channel, Susan Elizabeth Phillips. <laughs> And check out Meg's Cozy Tea Time. You're going to love that too. Meg Tilly author website. And oh, I just love talking to you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.